everyone. Welcome back to your practice. Here's another short flow where we'll take a look at strengthening for the hip region and then also uh, opening up into an external rotation pattern into the hip. So we'll take a look at some pigeon variations and some box variations in the short flow that you might be able to fit into your day. I'm just gonna um, offer that you might want a block for this practice, so or you might even want a blanket to sit on. So if that's supportive for you, we're gonna start in a seat and I'm gonna turn sideways on my mat so that my knees end up on my mat when I do a 90-90 sort of windshield wiping my legs side to side. So you might want that block, you can have it by you or a blanket. And let's begin uh, with our feet kind of out in a V position from the center of our hips and then allowing the knees to fall over to the left. So the, now the right leg is turning in, inner part of the upper leg points to the ground and the outer part of the left leg points to the ground. So you can put your hands behind you for this and roll through center and then over to the other side. And you can also adjust keeping your legs closer in towards you or moving them more towards a 90-90, 90 degree angle with the upper and the lower leg. So let's slide back and forth over to one side in the middle over to the other side and seeing how it feels on the knees. Your knees don't have to come all the way down to the ground. Might even do this with your breath. Landing here on your mat. Exhaling your day out. Okay, let's land so that the right outer knee comes to the ground. So that right leg is in external rotation. And this might be a place where you wanna put a prop underneath your hips to settle into this shape. If it's not feeling safe in your left hip in this internal rotation, you could elevate your hips. It's also okay if your left hip is a little elevated here. So let's take a breath, seeing if we can settle both hips a little closer to the floor. And then I'm gonna invite you to take the center of your chest over the middle of your right shin. So you can walk out over the middle of your right shin, adjust that angle of your shin. And you might press your arms towards straight, kind of like a downward facing dog. And you might also let your elbows come to the floor and maybe even reach your belly button like you wanna reach it over top of that right shin. Invitation to take a breath in. And out, feeling your points of contact with the ground. Heaviness of your back leg. And then you can walk up, and this is an optional part. You can press your left hand into the sole of your right foot, or maybe even your right heel, and see if you can, with that pressure, lift up that right shin off of the ground and hold for one, two, pressure from hand to foot, three, four, and five, letting that go. And here's another option we can take in this position. So turning a little to face over uh, the left internally rotated hip and leg, and then turning back towards that right leg and landing in that same stretch we were at. And if you want, you can elevate your back knee and foot off the ground. Lower it, come on up, turn over and look over your left shoulder and then fold over that right leg and lift that back leg up. Let's do this two more times if you're with me. So turning, rotating and then folding, maybe lifting, or even feeling that the back leg is lightening off the ground. One more time, lifting up and turning, and folding, and lifting that back leg off the ground. And you can lower it down, and if you like, now you can start to twist in the opposite direction, so towards the right shoulder, turning over your right, you might take your left hand to the outside of your right knee, maybe even onto the ground. And some of you might even take your left elbow to the ground and rotate through your torso, through the abdomen, maybe look over your right shoulder. And here's another option. If you can reach and you wanna do that active work in the hip, you could reach your right arm towards, maybe pull your left foot 
in towards you and reach your right hand towards your left heel and press them into each other and lift them off the ground for five, four, three, two, and one. And if you can't reach, it could be also be an option to feel that lightening of that left foot on the ground, left knee and left foot. And we can come on up from there and slide through the center, back into the middle V position and over to the other side. So always feel welcome to adjust your legs and use a prop, a little bit of height if you like. Might be really different on one side from the other. So let's land for a couple breaths. See how it feels to drop that right internally rotated hip. Adjust the angle of your feet compared to your upper legs. You might take a breath in there. Breath out. And then you can walk forwards over the middle of that left shin. Maybe press your hands like a downward facing dog. Could push some attention and length back into your hips. Could maybe take your elbows to the ground. And you might think of reaching your belly button over that left shin. Could take a breath in here. Your breath out. Maybe one more there. Mm -hmm. You can come up, you might stay there or you might try that more active um, variation of the stretch where you press your right hand and your left either ball of the foot or heel, whatever works for you together. Let's see if you can lift that left knee and left shin off the ground and you might work it towards that 90-90 position or pull it in for a five, four, perhaps you're slowing down your breath here in this challenge, three, two, and one, and you can slowly let that come down to the ground, come on up, and then an option to turn towards that internally rotated hip, and then fold again in that same position we were at over the left leg, like a pigeon variation, and you might lift up or lighten the right leg on the ground. You can lift up and turn over that back hip, I have Chelsea Kors to thank for this variation. And then fold and lift that back leg. You might feel some power in the back of your right hip. And let's do that two more times if you like. So you can turn and twist, maybe lower that right hip. And it might be an exhale here to fold and lift that back leg. Let's do one more. Come on up and turn and twist over that right shoulder. You might look behind you and then fold and lift that back leg or lighten the weight of it off of the ground if you like. And then come on up and see how your hips settle. Now an option is to turn in the opposite direction. So to turn over your left shoulder, might take a hold of your left knee with your right hand. You might lean forwards and take your elbow or your hand a little bit further or the elbow down to the ground. Noticing that rotation through the pelvis. It's okay if your right hip is off the floor here. Most of us it will be. And then you might inch that uh, the right heel a little closer in, so you might be able to reach it with your left hand, reach back, maybe your hand and heel come together and you press into them and there might be an opportunity to either lighten the right shin off the ground or lift it entirely for five, four, three, two, and one. Release that out, come on up. Settle into the hips and then come to the middle place and then I'll invite you to walk the soles of your feet together and you can play around with how far they are away or how close they are in towards your pelvic area and find a forward fold. So your forward fold a little or a lot and you can also press either your hands or if your elbows reach into your inner knees, maybe somewhere on the inner upper leg. Press your elbows and your legs in towards each other. So it's almost like you're closing up through your legs for five, 
four might be a little shake here, three, two, you could be with your hands, one, and then if you like, seeing if you can melt into the stretch a little more, and you might take a breath in here, your breath out. Okay, letting your spine come up on top of your pelvis as you're ready. Come into your all fours position, tabletop position, and you can start to shift with straight arms and tucked toes, shifting your weight forwards and back. Noticing how your hips feel here, how your lower back feels here. Connecting to your breath and your points of contact with the ground. And then as you're ready, you can tuck your toes, elevate your shoulders, elevate your hips, and walk yourself back into your downward facing position, downward facing dog. You might have bent knees, you might have straighter legs, pressing your arms towards straight. Finding your breath in. Maybe your slow, smooth breath out. And then as you're ready, right leg lifts up into the air and you can put some attention to spinning the inner right thigh up towards the ceiling. That might keep your hips a little more level for a breath in. Maybe lift that leg a little higher and a breath out. You can come up onto your tippy toes here. And then exhale, take your right knee towards your right armpit, your shoulders over your wrist, pause for a breath, and then back up into your three-legged dog with your right leg up and back. Then let's take our right knee on your next exhale if it feels right. Take your right knee in towards your right armpit and swing your right foot. So you wanna kick yourself in the left elbow with your foot. So it's kind of like you're in a hovering pigeon variation in a plank. And then take that leg back up into your three-legged dog. Okay, now we're gonna take that right knee again to the right armpit, kicking towards the left elbow, that hover pigeon. Turn onto the left inner edge of the foot. Start to lighten your left hand off and kick your right leg across to the outside of your mat. So it's coming out to the left. If you like, you can take your left arm up into a side plank variation. You might slide your right foot forwards a little, maybe even straighten your back left leg for a breath, pushing the ground away. And then we'll circle the left hand down, turn the back foot on a pivot, and come right up and back into that three-legged dog. And then we'll let that right leg come down towards your downward facing dog position. Pedal out your feet or find stillness. And then we'll lower back down into the tabletop position. And as you're ready, you might try to invert your fingers towards your knees. You could walk your knees in a little bit for that. And tuck your toes and start to shift forwards and back. Forwards and back with your own breath. You might reach out through your thumbs here. Totally okay if your fingers are a little more out to the sides. Finding that just right position, that just right sensation of stretch. Might even try to bend your elbows, round your back, and tuck your chin. You can let that go. And aim yourself back towards your downward facing dog position. And we'll take the left leg up into the air into the three-legged dog. Can come high up on your right tippy toes. You might put some attention into rolling that left inner thigh up towards the ceiling. So you might feel the pelvis a little more level there, the back a little more long. Could take a breath in. Pressing into the index finger knuckle of your hand, if you like, seeing if that supports length through the bicep line of your arms. Okay, let's take the left knee in towards the left armpit, shoulders over the wrist, push the ground away. Back into your three-legged dog. Again, left knee in towards the armpit, that floating pigeon variation, like you wanna kick your right elbow with your foot, strong, push the ground away, back into that three-legged dog. Again, left knee into the left armpit, come across that hover pigeon in a plank, and then start to 
turn onto the inner edge of your right foot. Kick the left leg across. Maybe lighten your right fingertips on the ground. Maybe reach the right arm up. Can slide the left leg forwards. Can straighten your right back leg. Pressing the ground away. You can circle your right arm down. Turn back foot onto a pivot. Tuck toes back into your three-legged dog. Breath in and out. And letting the left leg come to the ground. Either pedaling out there or finding stillness. And back onto the hands and the knees position. This time taking your fingertips out to the sides and shifting left to right. So going laterally, left to right, feeling into the wrists. Can tuck your toes again. Can even make circle eights, figure eights, <laughs> circling into them, round your shoulders. Aim for your downward facing dog. Go up and back and right leg up into the air, three-legged dog. Find that level pelvis for you. And then exhale, right knee in towards the right armpit. Slide it down towards your right wrist. And we're gonna come into a pigeon position. So you can stay high with your hips and take your left knee a little bit back. And you might be exploring making your front right shin a little more at a 90 degree angle. You can play with that. It's likely going to give a little bit more sensation into the outer right hip. You might inch your back knee back a little bit. You might keep your right foot pointed and pulled in. So getting a sense of where you're at with that and you might start to pop up a little bit onto your fingertips. So there could be sensation of stretch through the left front hip. Maybe you've engaged your, your seat muscles to push your pelvis a little forwards and elevate your low back area. Maybe you come up onto your fingertips. Can always take a block underneath your right hip and settle into it. Invitation to take a breath in and a breath out. Okay, let's see how it would feel to elevate the arms a little bit. Maybe lift them up alongside your ears. And then can you lean forwards a little bit so you feel like you're holding yourself with that right hip, super strong in your right hip, and then come back up. So you could do this with your arms up a little harder or them behind you. So let's try first behind you. Inhale up and then exhale forwards. It's like you're pulling your hips back towards the back of your mat. Inhale up a little more challenging with the arms up and then exhale, pull back. Let's do it two more times. Inhale up, exhale one more time. Inhale up and exhale and then fingertips to the floor, walk yourself forward. So that could again be that downward facing dog arm position, could be elbows to the ground. Take a breath in, your breath out. Okay, one more option here for our strong hips. So you can walk your fingertips back up and you can twist Okay, let's come up and twist to look over our left shoulder. So we're kind of turning from the pelvis to look over the left shoulder towards your back left leg. And then walk your hands so you're twisting your hands around towards your right, towards your bent leg. Maybe some people put your left elbow to the floor and you might even elevate your left leg off of the ground. And then you can come up, turn to look over towards your back left heel, twist and you might elevate your left leg. Let's do it two more times. Look up and turn, twist, and maybe there's just a lightening of that back foot or maybe elevation. One more time. Look over that left shoulder, twist and lighten or lift. And then back to the center. Last time coming through the middle. You're always welcome to come out of this shape before I say, or before I do, give yourself permission to make this practice yours. Last breath. OK, 
Okay, so if you've got a block underneath your right hip, you can take that out. Land your right hip on the floor, circle your left arm, left leg <laughs> all the way around until either your left leg is in front or maybe for some it stacks on top, so your shins are more stacked. The left knee might be a little more elevated. You can always put something under your seat here. And how would it feel to push your hands into both of your feet? wherever your feet are and press the root of your big toe that big ball mound under your big toe into your hands almost so that you are lifting the outer ankle off of the ground and that might elevate your knees a little bit so whichever position you're in how would that feel to do that take a breath in and your breath out you might fold and you might take that like belly button forwards over the front shin feeling. Maybe one more. And sometimes when there's intense sensation, we wanna get more intense about it, but how would it feel to make our internal sense a little softer, a little calmer, a little more easeful? Like softer in the jaw. Okay, let's come on up from that. You can cross your shins. You might add lift of your seat here. Roll over your shins, step or hop back your downward facing dog. As you're ready, left leg up into that three-legged dog position. Maybe finding that inner thigh rolling up. Exhale, left knee towards the left wrist or um, elbow or armpit and then take it into your pigeon variation. So knee a little to the side, choosing that angle of your front shin. I'm going to demo with a block because for some folks that is going to be something that can allow a bit more ease. And back toes could either be tucked or untucked. So you might start to come up a little bit here, feeling that strength through the backside muscles that could push the pelvis forwards and lift that lower back area a little bit. And this is challenging. So you could stay here, you could fold forwards, or you could do that hip strength work. Where Let's take our arms behind us first, where we'll lift up and then come forwards four times. So we'll lift up, might take your arms up, and then fold forwards, hips kind of feel like they're moving to the back of the mat underneath you. Up and fold forwards a little bit. I'm also pressing my left foot strongly into the ground, my outer shin, last one. And forwards. And then bringing the hands down, kind of softening, melting through the hips any amount. And coming forwards, could be arms straight, could be elbows down. You're connecting to your own breath. Okay, and you can walk yourself back up. So optional, you might stay down or come up a bit and you can kind of use your fingertips to look over your back right leg. A little twist, initiating it from the pelvis, looking over that back right leg and then twisting yourself over to that left knee. Maybe your elbow comes down and you could try elevating that back leg. Might try to turn, it might try to turn out a little. See if you can keep the knee pointing the ground or lightening it a little. So coming up and peeking over that back right shoulder, turning into the twist, maybe lifting that back leg up. Two more times, looking over. My leg wants to creep out to the side, so I'm gonna keep it in. Fold over and maybe lift. And last one. Look over and then turn and lighten or lift that back leg up. And then you might come through the center here and there's lots of variations that you could explore for your breath in and your breath out. And if you take that block out, you can swing the back leg around to land you in the box shape. So your shins could be crossed, one shin could be on top of the other. 
could elevate your seat if you like, put something underneath your seat. And either coming forwards and forgetting about this part or if it's interesting for you to find that activity in your hips and your legs, you could find that ball mound of the big toe, press into it with both your hands, find that resistance. Almost so you feel like you are lifting that outer ankle away from the floor, away from the leg. Might elevate your knees a little bit. And sometimes I notice when I come into more intensity of sensation, I want to kind of ramp up my energy levels to meet that sensation. But what would it be like if I gave myself a cue internally to find a little more ease, a little more softness in the breath, a little less effort in the shape? Does that change the experience? One more breath. Maybe the belly button's reaching over that chin. And can come on up from there. And you might either lie down or come into a seat. And any little movements you'd like to do to close off your practice finding a little twist, little Rice Krispies in your spine. And feeling into your hips and low back, seeing if there's any shifts. Maybe there's a, a word you can drop into your awareness uh, that describes how you're feeling right now. Maybe you're closing your eyes. No matter what your experience is with this practice, you're so much more than that. And thank you so, so much for sharing this short practice with me today. So grateful that you're here. May you have peace.